I'll only plunder those that refuse to accept this. I'll never plunder those that worship God. That's the main difference between following God and following the world. In God's kingdom, we actually care about you. The kingdom of the beast cares nothing about you, and those that rule it in it will promise you whatever they can so they can strip you of everything you have, even your soul, by leaving it hardened and destined for hell. They give you freedom as long as you accept their ideas of what is right and wrong. Whatever they give you is far outweighed by what they take from you. However, God's kingdom gives you everything and asks you for very little in return. All I ask is that you worship God instead of the beast. There is nothing else you have that God needs. Defeating the kingdom of the beast is as simple as showing you its true motives, which is to take advantage of you and leave you in ruin. At least, if I'm going to bring you to ruin, I'll let you know why. And it will only be because you are an enemy. I'll plunder you because you are an enemy of God. Satan plunders you to make you an enemy of God. I do wear the robe of Christ, which has been dipped in His blood, and hopefully some of it will drip on you and make you clean. You're supposed to be washed in the blood of Christ and not in the blood of man. War, abortions, and greed do nothing but kill. You need to try to give life instead of handling things physically. Why don't you handle them spiritually? It works for me, and it will work for you also. And you won't have to worry about the blood of others making your hands dirty, because you'll have only the blood that makes you clean. If you think a woman has a right to choose whether or not to have an abortion, then I have a right to choose not to have you in my kingdom. One day people will look back at this time and think, because it allowed abortion, that it was the most primitive, evil, and barbaric time ever. Drown yourself in the word of God until the spirit comes upon you and saves you. Let us bring in the new age. Let us grow up. You all are the Antichrist because you are against me. It seems that it is easier to get you to believe that I'm not than it is to get you to believe that I am. It is your rebellion that has been holding me back, but God has allowed it because it shows how wrong you can be by relying on yourselves. And when you do, how easy it is to be led astray. God allowed it because it showed how evilly corrupt you really are. Since your way didn't work, you're now going to be more willing to do it His way. If He didn't allow you to try your way first, you would have only come to Him half-heartedly. You would have always had the thought in your head that if this doesn't work out, you can always go back to your old way. Now you'll know there is no going back, and that you have to make a full commitment to Him and make this work. God will give you the strength to make this work, something He has never given you to allow yours to. This divine strength can only work on divine things, and what we are doing is divine, and what you are doing is not. That is why the world is more screwed up than ever it's been. Nobody has the same priority, let alone the divine priority, which is seeking God's kingdom first. If we all made it our priority, I can assure you, God would give us the divine strength to accomplish it. I don't understand the logic of people telling others 
who had just accepted Christ that it doesn't matter if they don't feel anything because when I really accepted Christ and surrendered my soul to him I felt something my suggestion is if you don't feel anything it's because you really didn't do anything and your need to really make an eternal commitment in order to feel his presence I'm not an oppressing spirit I'm trying to help you rise it's those that try to keep you from rising that have been oppressing you. When you send someone to jail for a long time, you are not showing mercy. They may find God while they're there and repent and receive salvation. But you have lost your salvation because there is no compassion in you. Who is worse, the Jews who wanted Jesus crucified or the Germans that were persecuting the Jews 2,000 years later for it? The truth is that they are both in hell. And you need to make sure that hate doesn't do the same thing for you. God is the one that hardened their hearts to accomplish His will. So we need to let God deal with them. I'm not saying you have to like them for what they did, but you must forgive them. It's like the ultimate test of can you forgive? And if you have, and if you pass it, then God can forgive you. Instead of worrying about them, we need to worry about how we feel about Jesus. We need to be like the soldier at the cross who said, surely this is a righteous man. This way, no matter who you are or what your people have done in the past Jesus can say to you today you will be with me in paradise don't continue to carry your old hatreds or I'm not going to be able to help you just because you are a Jew it doesn't mean you can't accept Jesus as your Savior and just because you are a German it doesn't mean you must not like Jews. These are old behaviors and they will not be tolerated if you want to be in the kingdom of God. If you really think we are wrong, then you should want to separate from us. Why wait for us to do it? As they say, go to hell. I'm going to show you what a divinely inspired king can do. You should not be robbing people, you should be rewarding people. I am going to drive out of the church all those that sell salvation instead of just giving it to people as a reward. Because when you sell salvation, you have robbed people because the price has already been paid by Jesus.